All right. Um, hello, Mistwood Publishing people. Uh, in this video, I am finally doing what I've been putting off for a long time and starting the Virgin map. This will be the first draft of, I would assume, at least two, but if not three. Um, what I have here is my little light box, and I have printouts of a rough draft of the Virgin, how, like how I see Virgin laid out. The thing is, is there's a lot of the continent that will be changing. Let me adjust this a little bit. So basically this area here, you know, the west, northwest is going to be a lot bigger. And then the southwest is going to come down a little bit more. Um, and so it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be... Uh, Virgin is like the one map that I don't have, like, fully cemented in my head. So it might take a couple drafts just to get things where, oops, where I want it to be. So basically what I got going on with the camera here is... It is under a, it is on, attached to a ruler that I have placed under my copies, my hardcover copies of The Lord of the Rings. It's a nice heavy book to keep the camera, you know, the ruler down, and then uh, I got the camera kind of, I would show you the camera, but obviously I can't. Um, but, yeah, so... That's kind of the setup. Uh, so I thought since I'm left-handed, this is what would work best. But I'll probably speed up the process so you're not just watching me do this for hours. Um, but you can kind of see how it's done so it's more of like a 10-minute video. Today, my goal is really to just kind of get the layout of the continent. Anything other than that is bonus points. So uh, let's get to it.
All right. So this is the top east here. So this is where, so Virgin is where the old continent, where the civilizations were uh, before the fall, if you will, for Ragnarok. And so these dots here are cities dedicated or camps dedicated to reclaiming Virgin, the continent from the darkness that claims it, you know, ever since the fall of the Ferrar. Because uh, this was the original, this was the first continent. Things were arguably better when people inhabited this area. So here is, you can kind of almost interpret it like the wall uh, in Game of Thrones where you have some noble people that go there on purpose. You have a lot of criminals that are sentenced to serve almost like a punishment of fighting to reclaim Virgin and being a part of that effort. Um, then, in Narbad, this is where he first lands in Virgin, so uh, that's why I bring it up. There is going to be something here. I don't want to say because it'll spoil something in Saga 4, but um, needless to say, I mean, they are fighting something, and I mean, it is, there's a reason why People have to be forced to come here. It's not a pleasant place. But Narbad and company do not engage in this part of the map at all. They take a boat along the coast to Evergreen. Now, the story behind Evergreen is that the first judge, to which the judges are a major part of this book's story, the first judge when she was done with her duties of being the, the judge and defeating the first terror, she went down to Virgin and separated this chunk of land, which was the ancestral homeland of the elves, with the power of the bow Moonra, and so now it's an island separated from the evil that is Virgin. And so wood elves and high elves are here, and this is where Narbite is going to go in search of the first weapons of judgment. Now, next we have down here a part of the map that is mentioned in this book but never really interacted with, but you will see interaction in Saga 4. Focus, camera. It's not going to focus. Uh, well, this is the Moonwood. You're going to see a lot of werewolves and things like that there. Uh, a forest that Narbed and company do you get involved in because they are on this river which connects here. I just haven't fully drawn that there, but uh, they are going to interact with the venom wood pretty significantly and also the blood wood. Now, what I'm probably going to do is use different types of trees to signify each forest in this zone because it's otherwise difficult to figure out which forest is which. But the venom wood is encompassing this here, and probably a little bit into here, um, so it's probably more like like that. The Moonwood is this peninsula, and then the Bloodwood is really kind of like here, right? So Narbad and company will be interacting and have chapters dedicated to both the Venomwood and the Bloodwood. And then we have probably the central most biggest landmark of the continent, which is the blood, or sorry, the Red Mountains, which is right here. It's supposed to be the biggest, well, it is the biggest mountain range in Virgin. Now, Virgin overall is smaller than Fostra, but it is still pretty sizable. So, I mean, it is a big mountain range. I don't think it's as big as the Crone Mountains and Fostra, but, um, it's a very big mountain range, and right here, this big, big mountain is Mount Dread, which is where Redigazar the Red, the Red Dragon, lives. And so Narbed and company will also be uh, in the Red Mountains and dealing with that as well. After they, after you know, they may or may not. It's not a shock that they would probably get out of the Red Mountains. Um, then they're into the swamplands of Soth, which is 
one of my favorite sections. It's one of the sections I added later on. I won't say what happens in the city of Zagoth, but there's a lot of stuff that happens in the city of Zagoth. Part one of the book is really here, like getting here, and then what happens here. Part two is the journey to the Red Mountains, and really it ends with the conclusion of the events in Zagoth which resolves a major arc that's set up in uh, Saga 1 for a certain character. Um, and then after Zagoth, they're brought to the Emerald Lake, which is where there are some giants that live in this forest here, but they are not evil giants that the Narbad companions will be interacting with. And that quest takes them, because they go with the giants, because the giants say they know where the last weapons of judgment is, because Redigazar was an, uh, a source of another one. I won't say which. Uh, so, Narbad and them are here. They journey up this river, and we have the Behemoth, Behemoth or Behemoth, I don't know how you pronounce it, forest, which is basically where giants are native and things like that. So they're kind of sailing through this. There's some stuff that happens here. Uh, we kind of gloss over this area here, but they're really... Um, headed for the Underdark, which this right here is not a lake. It is a passage into basically a giant net of caverns to which Narbon and company have to go into. And then they have to go up into the Khazar Desert for reasons I won't say. Um, this here is a savanna. Uh, this is where our quote-unquote African more looking nationalities stem from and come from. And this is the Khazar Desert's probably more of where, which is more of like this. It's where more of your like Middle Eastern nationalities might be originating from. Um, but that to say, this is a pretty primitive area, uh, probably like what you would find in Africa before the Europeans showed up. Um, but, you know, Marvin and them, they talk about being able to see it while they're on this river before it gets taken over by the Silverback Mountains. But, uh, yeah. Something happens in the Khazar Desert which takes them down to this section of the map, which used to end right here. So you saw me take out those turtles. They're not whales or goldfish. They're turtles from Aldi. But at any rate... Um, this is a very important, this is where really the third act takes place. Uh, so we have the mud fields, we have the fields of chaos, and then here we have where our Knight of Order, Meldalons, is. I have the artwork of him posted on uh, our Instagram, so you can check that out. Uh, places that will not be visited uh, during this book will be these forests, um, obviously the savanna, much of the Bayamoth forest is not visited. The straits are not visited. Uh, again, the Moonwood's not really visited. These plains up here are not really visited. But they do get into and touch a large section of the map. Now, I do want to, you know, show people and have stories take place in all the different sections, but... You know, it is what it is. Uh, we're not going to get through all the spots. Just like Fostra, we probably won't see every area of Fostra. This here is the, like, southern Antarctica, if you will. I don't know if I'm going to include it on the finished product because it is supposed to be a little bit further south. One thing about Virgin is that there is actually a continent between Fostra and Bergeron on, like, the western half. So, like, if I stand up here, and just remember that Fostra is quite a bit larger, but um, it's, like, up here in this, you know, further up in this corner, you'd see the beginning of a continent, which we'll see... Some stories take place in with the storyline of Demon Slayer. But um, at any rate, that's 
what I got so far. Obviously, this is an extremely rough draft. Probably for more of the final, I'm going to tip it, like angle it a little bit so that it's not like, you know, like that, but it'll look more like straight. And obviously things will be more refined, but I'm pretty happy with uh, the general layout. I think right here is a good zone to put the title. Maybe up here we can put the compass and uh, things like that. Um, I don't think that this map is going to have a key, so just like the last one didn't have a key. This paper is the same paper I did the Falmor map on, so it's not as big as the Fostra map, but that's fitting because Virgin isn't as big of a continent. So that works out, but that's going to be it for this first map-making video. Hope that you enjoyed it. Peace out.